China, they're shedding their bonds. They own the least amount they have in 15 years. Saudi Arabia, Russia, India, they're all shedding bonds and doing what? Buying record amount of gold. Gold has appreciated by 7.8% per year since 2000. That's better than the S&P and obliterated the bond market and has no counterparty liability. Why do we need treasuries for that have default risk, inflation risk, and interest rate risk? We can just buy gold and get rid of and kill two birds with one stone because they want to break free from the Western hegemony. It's not just the dollar, which has the supreme settlements, to Brett Johnson's point, it is still the supreme settlement currency for now. But what they can really affect is the reserve status of the dollar by shedding bonds and replacing it with gold, which has a much longer history in terms of it being wealth. Gold has outperformed both stocks and bonds since the turn of the century. Gold was among the best performing assets of 2023. According to an analysis by the World Gold Council, gold outperformed emerging market stocks, U.S. bonds, the U.S. dollar, global treasuries and commodities in general. Andy Schechtman, president and owner of Miles Franklin Precious Metals, emphasizes that major countries like China, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and India are shifting from bonds to gold. With a robust growth rate of 7.8% annually since 2000, Andy underscores gold's outperformance compared to both the S and P500 and bonds. Over the long term, the S and P500 outperform gold. Over shorter terms, particularly during periods of uncertainty, gold may have higher returns than stocks. As of December 2022, U.S. stocks had an average 10-year return rate of 12.44%, while gold only returned 0.92%. Meanwhile, Andy anticipates gold market changes before October's BRICS meeting, where nations may discuss a common currency, signaling a shift away from the dollar. Central Bank has sought to stock up on the metal throughout the alliance, with many assuming that it was for an impending BRICS currency announcement. However, Forbes has recently reported that the BRICS bloc is using gold to help shift global demand away from the U.S. dollar. Envisioning a financial shift, he proposes Bretton Woods III, a transparent system using commodities, with gold as a key Tier 1 asset. This system includes diverse commodities like silver and copper for a tangible asset-backed approach. Now, we present the clips of Andy Schechtman's insights from his recent interview with Investing News. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. In October, you have the BRICS meeting, where they are going to announce which countries have been admitted, and maybe even a commonly backed currency, which is one month before the election that will reshape the world. And I would say to you, the likelihood of seeing something happen with gold grows by the day as we get closer to these two very, very landmark pivotal decisions uh, and meetings and outcomes. Since 2000, which is, is, is 25 years ago, 24 years ago, uh, gold has outpaced the S&P and it's outpaced the bond market. You see the, the countries that used to accumulate our, our debt as an asset, which has a very short, limited time frame in historical sense of accepting a country's debt as wealth, as an asset. You look at China, they're shedding their bonds. They own the least amount they have in 15 years. Saudi Arabia, Russia, India, they're all shedding bonds and doing what? Buying record amount of gold. Gold has appreciated by 7.8% per year since 2000. That's better than the S&P and obliterated the bond market and has no counterparty liability. So the world is saying, why do we need treasuries for that have default risk, inflation risk, and interest rate risk. We can just buy gold and get rid of and kill two birds with one stone because they want to break free from the Western hegemony. It's not just the dollar, which has the supreme settlements, to Brett Johnson's point, it is still the supreme settlement currency for now. But what they can really affect is the reserve status of the dollar by shedding bonds and replacing it with gold, which has a much longer history in terms of it being wealth. And if you go back for the last century, for the last 25 years, it's outperformed the bond market handily and the stock market. So it, it acts the same way. And when you see the, the central banks, which are the most well-informed traders on the globe, not just the wealthiest, most well-informed, something tells me that gold will do very well when the, when the switch is flipped. But Charlotte, I think it happens on a Monday morning. You know, and a little by little by little by little by little, well, that's what people should be paying attention to. Bretton Woods too loosely would be when we defaulted on that. We closed the gold window, and then three years later, 50 years ago, struck an arrangement with the Saudi kingdom. Hey, well, we will protect you. That was the petrodollar. And he's saying Bretton Woods three is a system now that will be denoted or, or, or described through transparency, like blockchain technology, and commodities, like gold. So that's why I think, what is gold? The only other tier one asset. So how do you inspire confidence? People say, who's going to trust China and Russia? Well, who the hell trusts the United States anymore? 
So instead, you create a system that is trustless. You have a blockchain that the whole world can see, and you peg a commodity to it. Now, it doesn't have to be one to one because, you see, the gold people get hung up on the on the, the backing of gold for two reasons. One, De Gaulle from France proved that convertible currencies convert, and he tried to take all the gold away from us. That's why he closed the gold window. Because if, if you're not going to be true to the system, we'll call it on you and say, give us the gold. And he drained almost half the gold from the treasury, and so that's why Nixon closed the gold window. And they also say there's no way that the Fed would allow a one-to-one -one pegging because they wouldn't have the monetary ability to, to do things, expand the money supply or whatever. So how do you fix that? One, blockchain technology takes the, pace, the place of convertible. In other words, the immutability is there for everyone to see and audited by the independent auditors that will come in and say, yeah, it's there. Each country has this amount there. It's there. And the way to do it is to peg maybe 5 or 10% of each currency unit. So only 5 or 10% is pegged. That gives you 90 or 95% monetary latitude. They can do what they need to do, but still be tethered to the fact that instead of being able to copiously create money out of nowhere and destroy the currency, well, you can't do that anymore. And for the whole world to see in a, in a, in a blockchain, so you have immutability, you have commodities, to me, it's a system that will be backed by commodities. And it's not just gold. It could be silver. It could be copper. It could be anything, farmland, anything that you consider important in a, in a world of commodities, natural gas, oil, anything. Andy Schechtman predicts gold pegged to a new reserve currency, backed by the Russian finance minister and the 2019 reclassification by the Bank of International Settlements. Gold is a great potential alternative because gold remains more stable over time unlike the U.S. dollar, which has lost 98% of its purchasing power since 1971. He raises concerns about intentional efforts within the U.S. government to lose world reserve currency status. The U.S. dollar saw an 8% decline in its share of global reserves in 2022, causing many to question since then whether the dollar's days of dominance are over. A December Reuters poll of 71 currency strategists showed the dollar is expected to fall against G10 currencies this year with much of that decline predicted to come in the second half of the year. Moreover, Andy states risks to the banking sector and massive government debt, suggesting potential consequences for the U.S. global standing. Let's get back to the interview. You cross a whole different line when you do that as the world reserve currency. Little by little, suppression, coercion, sanctioning, confiscation, all of these things, instead of cooperation, is the rallying cry. And the glue that will make it stick will be the fact that gold, I believe, 100% will be pegged to a new reserve currency using blockchain technology or a new settlement currency. Now, two reasons I say that. One, we were told by the Russian finance minister two years ago that it will be a basket of commodities, especially gold. Two, what did the Bank of International Settlements do in 2019? They reclassified gold as the world's only other tier one reserve asset. And if you look at the amount of gold that these countries have bought, two years running, it's world record. Most gold ever bought, ever, by the central banks over the last two years, most of them, those countries. What I try to do is look at all the facts, put them together, and guess. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's Occam's razor, the most logical. All right, so there's a man named Jared Bernstein. He's the lead economic advisor to the United States government. Look him up. He has a degree in music and a master's degree in social work, and he's the lead economic advisor to the United States government. His, he advocates for the immediate loss of the world reserve status. He wrote a report called Dethrone King Dollar that was picked up by the New York Times. And when Trump slapped tariffs on China and he was president, he said, great, maybe this will break the dollar reserve status. This is a man who was advocating for the loss of the reserve status. Now think about that. Take a step back and say, hmm, if I want to lose the reserve status, what two things could I do more to piss off the world than to weaponize the dollar and then tell the, the linchpin of the hegemony, OPEC, hey, thanks, we're going green. So now you have, and then at the same time, inflate your currency. And part of the petrodollar status was taking the excess that you, you get from selling your oil in dollars and reinvesting it into treasuries. Well, how's that worked over the last couple of years as the treasury market has been obliterated? And then you look at what's happening here. It's all divided and divisive and, and screwed up, right? And the open cities and the, or the, the lawlessness and the open borders, all this stuff. They're looking at what the hell is going on in the United States. Now, what I'm getting at is this, is this too stupid to be stupid or could this be planned? Why would they do it? But why would they do it? Is the question. Everyone's going to be thinking, why would they do it? By the way, before I answer that, the number two economic advisor in the United States government is a lady named Lael Brainerd, who worked at the Treasury, then worked at the Fed, while at the Fed, 
working with MIT in development of the new central bank digital currency that Biden fast-tracked in an executive order, just ran point for FedNow that just came out a few months ago, which is like Venmo and Zelle on steroids backed by the Fed, which will probably be um, offered by in the place of checks and wires within a year. Point I'm getting at is one's a modern, they're both modern monetary theorists. One wants to see a culling of the banks. One wants to lose their reserve status. When you look at all the things that we have done and you look at the banks that are on razor's edge, they jack up interest rates so fast after incentivizing these banks to load up on treasuries when the reserve requirement was zero at COVID. The banks are on razor's edge. Well, what's the better, best way to blow up the banks? Let rates go to the moon. How do you incentivize that to happen without falling on the sword? What I'm basically getting at is this. My mentor was a man named Richard Russell. God rest his soul. The, the best newsletter writer, the smartest man. And he said back then, almost 20 years ago, the Fed is, has created so much debt it can never be repaid. There are two options, either inflate or default. And I think there's option number three. And option number three is to find a villain. It's those bastards, Xi Jinping and Putin and OPEC, they did it to us. How could they do it to us? But look at what we've done to shed. And, and instead of clinging to, the, to the, the prestige and the value and the exorbitant privilege of being the world reserve currency, we are doing everything we can to lose it. Weaponizing the dollar, going green, and letting everyone around the world, and even in the United States, say, what the hell is happening to this country? And it doesn't inspire the confidence that it once did. And, you know, we have $155 trillion in debt by the government's own admission. Some experts recommend allocating 5% to 10% of your portfolio to gold to ensure stability during market volatility and hedge against inflation. Ultimately, how much of your portfolio you allocate to gold depends on your short- and long-term financial goals and risk tolerance. What role will gold play in navigating the evolving dynamics of global finance? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.